time together. Uh, I'm glad we did it now. Stand on page 374. Page 374. Christ is risen. Let us pray. O gracious God, we come to you this morning and we ask that we be aware of the Holy Spirit that is all around us, that is guiding us and is giving us what we need in order to be a part of your church, the body of Christ. We ask that that Holy Spirit uplift us, fortify us, make it be what we need in order to get through this moment at this time. Allow that spirit also to be with those who are not present, who are still um, listening remotely. Let that spirit guide them as they go through their day. Let that spirit give us something this morning, either in the music or in the fellowship or in the message or the reading of scripture that is what we need for this moment, this time, because that's all we're focused on. So this is your world and your time. We're grateful for everything that we have. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Our announcements for this morning, I want to thank uh, you all for the time uh, that uh, Jill and I had in the last couple of weeks. We um, um, were able to help Jill's mom out. She Oh, sorry. Um, getting back into old things here, just to remember things. Uh, she's she had quite a bit of storage units, and we spent many many days um, going through that. And um, it was a physical and an emotional um, roller coaster, just because the, uh, she, you know, for better or for worse, saved every single scrap of memory. Uh, from our kids, from her kids, and everything. So we were going through uh, Jill's baby clothes, Brandon's baby clothes, Riley. I mean everything. So we're 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 grateful to be able to do that and get that taken care of right now. And I'm I'm grateful for the time that the church has allowed me to do that. The um, CUOC collection for September is cereal. Um, 
We have uh, God's Not Dead uh, playing um, light in the darkness um, uh, today here in the sanctuary at 5 p.m. The upper rooms uh, for September and October are in the, the, the front there, front there uh, for you to pick up. The adult uh, Sunday quarterlies for fall are also there as well. United Methodist Women, uh, Tuesday, September 7th at 6 p.m. by Zoom is that meeting. We have the 235th Homecoming Memorial Service. It's going to be September 12th here. Um, uh, information about that and what, to, uh, what follows um, in the picnic shelter. Uh, again, with uh, another movie, we got Toy Story on uh, send Sunday, September 26th at 5 p.m. Um, and then um, uh, we've got some uh, holiday-themed ones, Charlie Brown and Hotel Transylvania on uh, Saturday, October 9th uh, here uh, in the grassy area. We're going to try to do it outside to see how that works. Regularly scheduled council meet, church council meeting and voting on item surcharge conference is set for October 24th, immediately after the worship. And then our charge conference uh, this year is November 7th, 1.30 um, at First UMC in Randleman. And that will probably also be, um, also, we may be able to view that remotely as well um, uh, at that time. Any other announcements for this morning? Bill, will you uh, lead us in the reading of our psalm? Greet one more uh, this morning uh, as we feel comfortable to do so. Yes.
Please join me with the Apostles' Creed found on page 881. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, our only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From hence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat> Have some children come up. And... Good morning. I am so happy to see you. I've missed you guys. I missed seeing your faces on Sunday morning. I'm glad I'm back. We're going to be talking about something today and um, in church at about um, a little bit about knowing what to do, but then actually doing the right thing or knowing the right thing and then actually doing the right thing is what the what, uh, scripture is telling us. So I want to share a story. Before I went on vacation, I went to see the doctor. How many of you guys have seen doctors? All right. Well, when I went to the doctor, I got some bad news. And um, we joked about this. We, you know, people my age, we talk about things like A1C and cholesterol level and all that kind of stuff. And kids don't understand it. But I've been told that my, the what I've been eating is not very good for me and my body and that I have to change it, okay? So that's what the doctor said. And he said things like, well, if you have breakfast, instead of having, you know, something like this, what are these? Pop-tarts, Pop right, yeah. Maybe I should do this instead. What is this? Oatmeal, yeah, with nothing on it. No brown sugar, no cream, no, just plain oatmeal. So... That's what the doctor told me to do. Um, and I said, well, you know, what, I, I, get a lot of, I get thirsty a lot, and I'm tired a lot. And I said, what should I drink? Uh, and he said, well, probably you should drink water instead of maybe, what is this? Um, yeah. He says, no, th this one is what you're supposed to do and not this one. Uh, so I have to change that sometimes. Not that I'm drinking Monsters a lot, but sometimes when I need a little bit of energy. And then... Um, you know, if I'm looking for um, a, a snack or something, um, you know, he's and and I and I usually make, yeah right. Is your, this is this is your thing, right? Talkies. <coughs> Instead of having that, maybe he said I should have something, you know, like, you know, yeah. That's what I said too. Oh, you got to be kidding me, really? No talkies. And then finally, when I, you know, I, I kind of have a, a sweet tooth, and I love this time of the year, the holiday time, time of the year, because you know what comes out during this time? Is holiday-themed cookies, right? Everybody know these? Yeah. So I love these, but, the, but after talking to my doctor, he said, no, you should probably just go with, you know, something like raisins. If I need something sweet, and I have to, and not a big box, but... Just like half of this box could be. So what the doctor told me to do, I know is right. And I know it's healthy for me. But do you think I'm following what the doctor told me to do? You guys know me well. I'm trying to, but not all the time. But that's the whole point of what he's, is that we know what's good for us, but we don't follow what is. We just make up our own mind about what we want to do and how we want to do it. And in scripture today, and what we're learning in church today is the same thing that the brother of Jesus told the, his, uh, uh, James, told his uh, church. He basically said, look, you know what the right thing to do is, and sometimes you just don't do it, and you have to follow through with actually doing it. I'm almost done. So that's what we're going to focus on, okay? 
what God asks us to do, but not just knowing it, but actually doing it. Okay? Let's pray. Prayer fingers, ready, set, pray. God, thank you so much for this morning, for these children in church and parents that bring them to church. We're grateful for their presence. We know that we are able to see and understand the kingdom of God a little bit differently through their eyes because scripture tells us that that's what we are supposed to do. Help us to know the right thing to do and also to follow through in our actions. And we do this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Here you go. And no, you can't have the talkies. Sorry. There you go. All right. You guys can go. To Sunday school? Or you, can, or you want to get one? I'll grab them a couple. Yes, there's um, all need, definitely need prayers uh, for going through uh, the next couple of months in my health here. So uh, we go into a time of prayer. Uh, we're uh, obviously um, very um, focused on Dilbert and his condition and uh, what he's going through right now. And for what I've heard, I've um, spent some time with him in the ED on uh, the other day and. Uh, he was able to have a conversation and understand what was going on, and I, I think that's still going on, but we're just going to be focusing on prayers for healing and, um, and getting stronger and doing the things that he needs to do in order to get out. So we're going to keep him in our prayers uh, this morning. Obviously, we are praying for the families of the service members that were lost this last week, um, uh, just, you know, a uh, horrific uh, situation, and um, we just want to keep them and their families and their community in our prayers, as well as all those who are sitting right now on the Gulf Coast that are uh, about ready to get walloped with a big storm. We want to keep uh, them in our prayers as well. Um, are there any others that need to be lifted up uh, this morning? What do we have? Okay. No more trampoline for you. <laughs> Keep that. Uh, Alex and Morgan, I haven't heard from them. In a, are they doing well? Okay, good. Well, let's um, go to God in prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, we um, lift up all of these prayer requests uh, for you this morning. We know that you hear all of them. We know that us voicing them is redundant. You already know what we need, what those people need. We are uh, just grateful to be able to uh, pray and to have you answer prayers and uh, give us this morning the courage and the strength and the patience to listen to your answer, however that may come to us. God, we lift up all of those who are suffering around the world, uh, still within this pandemic and in this country, those who are, um, uh, those communities that are being, um, you know, big holes left in them for people passing because of it. We lift up uh, those who are serving this country. Again, we are putting those families and those members uh, um, in your care today. Um, some things are indescribable when it comes to understanding your will and how you work within our reality, but we know it's all for your glory. God, we lift up all of those within this congregation that need healing, that need uh, your presence in their lives. We lift up all the prayer requests that we have within us that we're hanging on to that we don't feel comfortable voicing right now. We know that you answer all of those prayers. 
God, we thank you for your, for your just consistent, loving presence in our lives. And we do this with a prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to Our uh, reading for t- yeah yeah Tuesday this last Tuesday or coming up Tuesday coming up Tuesday all right all right happy birthday another another year blessing our reading for today comes from the letter uh, uh, of James. Um, we're going to be spending uh, some time with James in the next couple of months. It's uh, chapter 1, verses 17 through 27. Hear these words. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. For your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourself of all sodriness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But, he, but be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror, for they look at themselves and on going away immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty and perseverance, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive, uh, deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for the orphans and the widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. This is the word of God for the people of God. So yes, we are going to be spending some time with the brother of Jesus. Uh, There are two James that are mentioned in the New Testament. One, uh, James, the the son of Zebedee, and then the brother of Jesus himself. Um, And we know that the letter is attributed to him. Um, He was martyred uh, in the year 62 for his teaching and his beliefs. Um, but we know, it's, uh, it, it, we know about him and his ministry and his leadership from other uh, Jewish um, um, authors. Uh, Josephus and Asebius wrote about his ministry and his leadership at that time, so we're pretty confident that that's who we're talking about. James um, uh, really didn't spend much time talking about the Torah itself, nor does he mention Jesus uh, that much at all, only twice in the whole letter. One in the verse chapter, verse one, and then at the beginning of chapter two. And most commentaries believe that's because he was talking about his brother. You don't reference him if he is family. Um, And that's kind of uh, what it uh, is focusing on. But also, too, James is talking about a very practical way of living, uh, what it looks like uh, to be a follower of Christ or of his brother not specific to one congregation or church by language or custom or nature. It is kind of a a letter that is very applicable today as it was uh, so many many years ago because it's very um, general in what it uh, uh, touches on and how it focuses on things. Um, It's uh, been kind of focused on a church that has lost their culture, lost their cities, traditions, 
Uh, the word they use is in diaspora. That's reference to the Jewish um, um, uh, people when they were in um, um, exile. So there's a, a little bit of a connection there. The, the writing style is a Groman Reco teaching uh, diatribe. Uh, it's basically uh, using a lot of fictive characters, uh, conversations between individuals, question and answers, and metaphors um, usually related to nature or creation. Um, it's a collection of sayings or teachings uh, for the church, and that's kind of how we can look at it. It did get a little bit of pushback throughout history. Uh, Martin Luther called it the straw epithet because uh, it was so focused on works, on what we do and how we live our lives, and it started to pull away in his mind from that salvation by faith and kind of looking to more how we live our lives and our actions. So he was leery of it, but um, it's still something that's part of our tradition, and it's something that we can look to today in order to guide us in what we're supposed to be doing as followers of Christ. Major themes within the, the letter is knowing and knowledge about the kingdom of God and about God's character and who we are as the church. And it's the connection between knowledge and action that comes to um, the forefront in our way of life. Um, knowing about God and living a life that is what Paul says worthy of the gospel is kind of what he's focusing on here. And there's a gap between there. And all of us kind of know that if we've spent some time in the world, uh, there's a gap between knowing and doing. Um, and how we experience that is uh, through wisdom. And in the word of, from scripture, it's uh, Sophie. And it's kind of interesting that uh, when I got my appointment here, I was just kind of reflecting on the, ta the name of the town and, and, and how that is present in scripture as wisdom and understanding uh, uh, how we live our lives. It's wisdom that produces a religion that is pure and undefiled before God. And it's um, something that his brother is, is uh, crucial in, in um, giving us that advice. And having spent time this last week with uh, my brothers uh, after many years, uh, Jill's brother, um, uncles, um, I'm able to kind of reflect upon how brothers give you a unique um, perspective on your life. And they're very willing to tell you about that and let you know how they feel and where you're excelling and where you're going wrong and how you uh, can change your path. And being the youngest of eight, that was always, uh, I had um, many different opinions coming at me and I still do about where I'm at, what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. So I understand a little bit about James focusing on his brother's ministry and what he was called to do. And I think um, in this case, we're, we're able to kind of get a glimpse of not only the gospel, but also a little bit of the family and understanding of uh, through his letter, we see how Jesus would have wanted us to live and how he wanted us to act. Today, we... Uh, the scripture that we're reading can be kind of broken down into three parts uh, of defining the identities for us today. One, the identity of God, which is in verses 17 through 18. Um, I, um, uh, defining the followers of God, which is in verses 19 through 25. And then of the church itself, which is in uh, verses 26 uh, and 27. First of God. We know and we hear there that every generous act, every perfect gift is from God, from above, um, Father of light. And that's important for us. Um, 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 the, the, during our time, we had a, a, a lot of um, downtime on the airplane. So I was watching some of the old Star Wars movies because they were the only things that were on there. And, uh, and we all know about the Star Wars movies. They, they focus on this force that surrounds every living thing and that um, it, it guides and does, uh, um, it, it's the main part of that movie. But there is a choice within that movie that that force has, you can either follow the dark side or the light side of the force in how you live your life and in your actions. 
But in this case, we hear from James that there is no dark side to God's force, no gar- dark side to God's love or to his uh, um, uh, spirit in the world. It's clearly um, stated that there is no variation in chat- shadow or change. There is only one thing that God gives us, and that is the, uh, from the Father of light. And we understand what that is through the word of truth, the gospel. And we are created in God's uh, plan to be those first fruits. Uh, and that's a reference to the harvest about, you know, that the best things that we offer to God, the best things that come uh, uh, at the beginning of the harvest that dictate what the harvest is going to look like. And that's who we are. This is God's plan. This has got the nature and the character of God, one that is giving, that is good, that is unchanging, and we participate in that image of God. So that's the first thing. We, uh, uh, James kind of points out you know, what God looks like. Secondly, we as the followers of Christ, the beloved, as he calls us, and this is a word that we see in the Gospel of John sometimes, The beloved. We must understand, and that word uh, means both physically and emotionally, what um, God is asking us to do and how God is asking us to live. Quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. If we, just as the body of Christ, could master those three things, the world and our communities and our lives would be a heck of a lot better. Reflecting on this sermon today and when I was writing it uh, this last week, I was thinking how much that saved my soul uh, during the time that we helped clear out uh, six storage units and arguing about what teacup to save or what picture to save from 35 years ago, being quick to listen about what that item meant to somebody and then slow to speak and how that is that we can acknowledge that that is a valuable memory to that person and then definitely slow to anger, which, um, um, you know, I had to work on and Jill as as well because you can't save everything in somebody's life. If nothing else, uh, if we just follow those three things, uh, we can change our lives, we can change the church, we can change the communities that we live in, and in fact, we could actually change the world. And James is putting so much importance on this is that he's saving that if we do this, it saves our souls within us. Secondly, there's a distinction about doers and hearers of the word. And this is where uh, Martin Luther got involved and kind of took um, um, uh, took some time with uh, with James you know, the word of truth that we hear through the gospel is something that we're not supposed to just meditate on or something that we're supposed to uh, have a mental exercise or that we're supposed to reflect upon it during the time that we're here in church or when we're reading scripture or when we're um, praying. It is something that uh, we need to extend to every aspect of our life. If we're just taking the time at church and prayer and our scripture reading, we're missing the point, James is saying. The point is um, that is not what God intended us to do. Yes, we are supposed to reflect. We are supposed to have those times. But if we are only listening and we are not doing, then we're missing what God has intended for us. In fact, it's just like what I shared with the children. If I go to the doctor and the doctor tells me, you need to start eating these things to make yourself healthy and well, and I say, thank you, doctor, I understand that, and I do the research, and I know that all of those items are good for me, and all of these items are bad for me, but yet I still go ahead and eat the bad items. I'm not integrating that knowledge into my life. And it's something that we need to focus on as the church because I think we isolate ourselves sometimes out of fear, anxiety. They're not willing to put the gospel out there to people or to preach the gospel to people. I um, had a a fun little experiment this uh, trip. Every time we ate out, which we did quite a bit, um, 
uh, I would ask the server if there was anything, when they brought the food, I asked the server, is there anything you need to pray for? Uh, we're about to bless this meal. And um, just the reaction from people, uh, from complete disregard to one person completely breaking down in the middle of their shift and crying. Just, we don't know where people are, and we don't know how the gospel is going to affect them, and God has given us the tools and the information and the knowledge to maybe speak into people's lives in simple ways. So we need to act upon that as opposed to just understanding it. And then reflecting on who we are and our identity in Christ, we uh, can't ignore that that is God's plan for us. Not hearers who forget, but doers who act, as the scripture says. And there's a reference to the law there, the perfect, uh, uh, the liberty, in ver uh, and that uh, verse, uh, most commentaries, re reflects to what is being said in uh, the following chapter, chapter 2, verse 8, where James calls it the royal law, and that is, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So the, there's some kind of boundaries that we look at as we live our lives as Christians. And if we do, in the doing, we are blessed, it sa he says. And the blessing that we received is that we are provided for, we are equipped, we are given what we need in order to do what God has asked us to do if we trust in what God is doing. And that's the important thing. We have to put ourselves out there in trust and then just be open to what God is doing and how God provides and equips and supports us in that task. Third, we talk about the church, what the church is supposed to be. And in this case, he talks about religion. And that word, um, uh, whether it's worthless or pure, is the two ways of looking at it. Um, religion in the word translation is Fear and trembling before God. So any action or uh, a thing that we are fe fearing and trembling before God, uh, trachosis is the word, and that's kind of what it means. And it's based upon the individual mandate that James gives us uh, within the scripture, which is uh, binding our tongues or our thoughts um, and then not deceiving our hearts by how we act and what we do. Those two things... Uh, he says, is what really kind of brings us in connection with being able to fear and tremble God in a way that we are supposed to. And then we can take that individually and then just bring it together as a whole at the communal level um, as the church. If we're all doing that, um, that will reflect a pure uh, religion as opposed to a worthless one. And worthless just means you know not useful, not doing anything. It's just a a waste of time. It's not a negative connotation. It's just, it's just you know, it's, you're, you're spinning your wheels, basically, is what James is saying. Uh, what this looks like uh, to be pure, he gives us a very clear definition of what fear and trembling of God is when it is pure. First, it's care for orphans. Um, that in, in this case, that is the fatherless, both biologically, but also could be mentors or guides. Um, so those people who need help, who need guidance, are one of our main priorities as the church, as a pure religion. The second one uh, is widows. Those without households is basically what it breaks down to. Those who did not have a, the support of a, of, a, of a home or a community or a family. There's also connotations to the city as a whole, a city that has been stripped of all their culture, all their tradition, all of their uh, founding um, um, you know, um, moors and, and bedrocks. Uh, this is a, a, a widowed city in scripture. So it's those that are kind of lost and out there. Um, and the word that was used is not only just a physical caring for, but also an emotional caring for. So it goes both ways. Not only are we to be feeding their bodies, but also feeding their souls, both on the individual level and on a community level. And then finally, to be unstained by the world. And that's a big word 
uh, in uh, Scripture, uh, the world, um, kairos, um, basically to be marked or identified by what culture and what the world tells us is successful, what is right, what is the good thing. And this is a, a theme that we can go on and on forever about how we define our lives and what we base that definition on. And James is basically saying here it's simple. Just don't be stained by the world. Don't let the world be seen on you. Don't judge yourself by worldly standards of success or wealth or truth or understanding. But you do that through what God has um, uh, set forth. Again, on our trip, I was able to reflect on that because we took a trip through Hollywood and I've never, and, and not only that too, when we were in Monterey, it was car week, so I've never seen so many Lamborghinis, Ferraris, Porsches, everything. Hundreds of millions of dollars worth of cars, and I just, like I said, they're just cars. But this uh, group of individuals define their life based upon what they have, what they possess. We have to look at how we live our lives based upon these three criteria if we are to be a true church, a true religion. And if we do, that will shape our lives as Christians. It will shape our lives that we live our life based upon the wisdom of God and the truth of the gospel and to have a life of wisdom or Sophia. So this week, I hope that we take the opportunity to look at how God is acting in our lives and how if we are responding to what God is asking us to do and where and how big is our gap in our lives of what we know about the gospel and being a follower of Christ and where we live our lives and how we live our lives and how big that gap is and how we can bring those two together. I hope that we spend some time that we listen to what's going on around us and that we take our time when we respond and definitely that we take our time to get angry. When we get angry, metaphysically, we lose control. We lose our ability to comprehend things, to understand things. Uh, there have been many studies about it that when that point when you get angry, there are certain things that are cut off from our rational thought, because that's how God created us. We've got to look at that and see what that is in our life. And then finally, too, as a church, to reflect upon how we are doing with the needy, how we are doing with the isolated, and how we are doing with being able to say that the church in the world is making a difference. And we do this, I hope and I pray in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are grateful for the opportunity to be here, listen to scripture, reflect on your word and on what those who were closest to you thought about your ministry. Your brother wrote words down based upon knowing you from birth, watching you grow up, being a part of who you are as the Christ. And upon your death and resurrection, he gave his life to your mission, to the mission that God instilled in all of us. Your brother took this task, this mission, to the point of his own death to die for your brother is what he did to die for what your brother advocated in the world. Let us have the strength and the courage that James had in spreading the gospel and making what we believe and know about the kingdom of God and about the gospel a reality in our life. Give us the strength within our homes, within our communities, within our places where we dwell to shrink that gap between the action of this world that's defined by this world and the knowledge that we have as followers of Christ. And let us be able to look in the mirror 
and know that we are that same person and not forget who we are. The one that was created, the first fruits. And we do this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us leave here as those who are going to be doers of the word as well as believers of the word. Let our life reflect the gospel to a community, to people who desperately need to see and hear what God's plan is for their lives and for ours. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.